Okay, well, before we get this party started, I had a, a video problem and my camera didn't record the first part of me cutting this piece of uh, laminate here. So what I did was just, you know, the bad board, I cut it um, by setting my, my uh, cordless uh, Hercules uh, skill saw, I guess, circular saw, to size. And I, and I adjusted it to the width, the thickness of the board, not the width, the thickness of the board, and there's a padding under it, which you'll see here uh, shortly. And so it cuts through, but not into the, into the manufactured home subfloor, which is wood, and you wouldn't want to damage that. Also, um, you wouldn't want it to go all the way through and hit concrete if you were on a concrete slab. So right now here, I'm looking for a, a, a crack in the board and you can see it once you, f once you feel it. And so I was thinking at this point that it must have been something underneath it that caused it to crack, but uh, I'm looking around for it and, and I, I, there's nothing there. You can see the crack here if you're looking at it in the right light, but underneath it, um, there's there's nothing wrong with it so it's really kind of odd of you know what's happening there so I had to save that board so I can send it to the uh, manufacturer because we did get paid for this it was a warranty issue um, and normally if, if somebody calls you and you're a, a DIY guy or a handyman or something like that and they have one of these boards doesn't matter who makes the laminate you can you can do this type of repair um, the factory paid uh, 450 dollars to have this done and this video is basically the time it took me it was uh, you know I, I had to drive you know uh, 20 30 miles to get to the house you know in another small town um, tombstone actually a town too tough to die and then uh, do the repair and then drive home. So it's uh, maybe two and a half hours, you know, of actual thinking, yeah, maybe a little bit more. So what I've done now is I got that out of there, vacuumed it and cleaned it all up. Like I said, I kept having a lot of problems with my, my phone, which is what I use for, you know, my camera. And, and it kept just shutting off for no apparent reason, but my phone doesn't like me. So... Now I'm just checking to see if this board that I'm replacing it with was in her shed. And, and so they do need to be acclimated from time to time. So I'm just checking to see if it's the, the right width so I don't have to try to move things around or come back the next day after it's acclimated a bit. So I'm going to have to cut, and that's what I'm trying to explain right there, is got to take off a couple of the edges that... Um, I guess you you know it's a tongue and groove but it's a locking system so they both look like tongues but the one that sets on top um, I'm cutting off here so then that way it can drop down onto the, the side on my right in this video where my hammer is it can drop down on that other portion of it and then be glued and so I've got to cut that off, and you try to cut it back kind of at an angle so you get up underneath it because you don't want anything hanging out or it'll get caught up on the top piece of laminate, and it could chip it. So you want it to just kind of basically drop right in, but you want it tight enough to where it's just not loose because then you'd have to move the whole floor over to close off that gap. So, see, here's the second part. And you can just kind of use a razor knife and, and cut it and, and get that off. You don't need to get a chisel or a saw because if you do, then you might booger it up even more. So I just go over it three or four times and get it to uh, cut. Now here I can get it in that way, but the other side also, it's all interlocking. So I had to cut off part of the back side of the piece too. Even though I think here in a little bit, I, I push the board that's up against the wall, the continuation of that plank. I get it to go under the wall a little bit, but it, it stops, so I, I, I have to shave off the, the back piece also. 
uh, just to, to where it can drop down in there. Because when I tried to push it under the wall, it, it, it stopped. There, I guess it was running into the, the drywall or the, the plate. So rather than, than argue and, and, and cuss at it, I just uh, decided to cut that back piece off. And, and if you cut the right pieces off, then it can drop down in there and still be glued or there's still a locking edge that it can snap into. It, it, it's just like a double locking system. So you, you can kind of get a feel for what you're, what you're going to take off there and make sure. Now this one, see, I didn't cut it just right. So now I got to get my little uh, uh, pocket knife. I keep looking up at the phone just to make sure it's not bucking me and shutting off again. And then just kind of shave that off, you know, a couple of times back and forth. And then uh, I'm sure a lot of people are watching this going, Jesus Christ, I can see you cutting yourself, uh, which it's past my body. It's, you just can't see it from this angle. And, and, and then I'm pulling kind of toward me, but also away to where if it slipped, it would, my hand would go off to the right. And then once I get close enough to where I could hurt myself, I just uh, use, you know, my thumb and my finger to, to, to kind of cut those last little slivers off. Weren't very big anyway, so it wasn't a major problem. So now I'm just going to fiddle fart around in here and, and get it to test fit in there. And... Uh, make sure that it works and uh, you know I got everything out from under there and vacuumed up and all that and then uh, then just put it together so I think I got my length right and uh, and then uh, and the width was fine so I'm just tapping it you gotta be very careful with that normally I would have a nylon tapping block but it's way out in my truck and yeah whatever so I cleaned up so efficiently that uh, I, I didn't even have a scrap of wood to uh, tap on it. So see, here's where I'm pushing it in, and it just stops moving. So it's like, oh, you know what? Let me try this uh, thing here. I got a little explanation of that tool at the end here that I'll put on there to show you how that works because um, it's actually pretty cool. If you do floor covering repairs like this or you're a handyman or something like that, you know, right there, I'm showing you that it's got some, like, sticky tape on it. And uh, it's almost like, once you put the tape on there, I mean, at first, it's really, really sticky. But um, it's grippy, almost like a, like a saw guide, you know, to where when you, if there's no tape, there's no glue on it. But when you stick that saw glide down, guide down there, that blue piece of tape that's on most saw guides is kind of like silicone it's just real grippy and soft and, and and so if you push down on it properly it will uh it will hold it in place so i'm trying one last time and then i decided well that's not gonna work but i did get it get it together finally um and got it dry fitted then I had to take it back apart again so I could get some glue on the, the two edges that have to be glued. Because see, see right here, it's locking in on the one side, and then the, and then it'll drop down and, and it kind of snaps in. But I wanted to glue it anyway, just to be sure. But you don't want to put glue on it until you know it works. So it's it's kind of make work. You know you. You get it in there just right, and then you're like, okay, now i got to take it apart again. But you, you want to make sure it's going to snap together and look really good because you don't want to be having to mess with it. This way, I see I, I'm pulling it apart. I mean, I'm pushing it to where it dropped in. But if, if there's like a hairline gap, then it would look bad. So there, I can barely get my knife in there, so now I'm tying it back up. So get my razor knife and then make sure my bone hasn't screwed me again. But I guess it, it, it started working finally. It got out of its weird little, st I'm a stupid little bitch mode. So we'll wait along here. Um, 
I, I find the cordless tools really handy because I have gotten to where yeah, this market's still working. Um, I don't like running cords because when you're working and you spin around, your foot might catch a cord, and if that cord's plugged in behind a a nightstand or something, you know it might wiggle that nightstand just enough for the lamp to fall over and break or to knock a picture off the wall and stuff. So there's there's a reason I buy a lot of uh, cordless tools, other than the reasons my wife thinks I do because I want more tools, which is true in part. So there, now I got it loosened up. I'm going to just get some new uh, uh, Loctite glue in there. And 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 honestly, it, I do have uh, the CA glue with the activator, which is really just super glue with a, a, an activator that once you put it together, it dries and, and you're done fiddle fucking around with it. But as you'll see here, I end up having to fiddle fart around with it to get the, the end joints pulled back together enough to where it, it closes that gap. And, and if it was super glue, well, then it had already been dry. It'd be almost dry right now. So I've kind of quit using super glue as much fun as it is. And for some things, I can use the, the super glue when I'm doing repairs. Like if I'm just putting a couple of end joints together, I will uh, smack them together real quick. And then, and then let the super glue dry. But uh, normally, I don't do that. I, I I now use the wood glue, and and I like the uh, Loctite, uh, the different colors, not the old you know Elmer's glue color, and it's interior exterior, which means it's water resistant. And and this laminate that I'm working on here is waterproof, <coughs> or water resistant up to 80 hours so you don't want your glue failing after you know 10 hours if the whole product is warranty for 80 hours so here's where it gets fun because the this type of product does not have a side lock I think I might have said that and like with the Unilin locking system it will just slide together and, and lock really nice um, this is more of a drop and lock so it's it's kind of a pain in the ass to, to get together, even though I've cut off part of it. You know, I guess I could have shaved a little bit more off to where it would have uh, just slid in there and let the glue hold it, but I didn't. So now I'm just trying to get all two planks here to go together. And like I say, if I if I keep my foot on that, it'll uh, it'll work without changing the tape every, you know, 10, 15 seconds, you know, or whatever. And I have learned, even though I'm smacking the hell out of it here, I always forget that it works better if I just, you know, tap on it, you know, hit it hard, you know. But what you're doing is just tap, 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 instead of bam, bam, bam. Because when it doesn't want to go bam, 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 it doesn't. So... Um, that's why right. now I gotta I do have to change my tape because that was in my toolbox for quite a while and uh, got kind of dirty so that's why as you can tell see I'm still farting around with this damn thing if I'd have used a, a super glue or a real fast drying glue I I, I would already be screwed and and when you're working with this, you don't want to get screwed because if that glue dries in the in the locking mechanisms, I mean, then you won't get another piece in there, and you won't get because it's almost like having dirt in there now. It, it dried in the wrong place, so if you move it, now you have that little crustacean in there that won't allow it to go together because their boards are built in pretty tight tolerances. So now see here I've, I've I've remembered my old trick to just keep tapping it instead of trying to beat it into submission really quick and and, uh, and then once it gets to where it's almost close then you can hit it a little harder because then it will snap into place so, um, 
I, I thought of editing this up a little bit and, and stuff, but I thought, you know, um, you need to see how long it takes to do this. I mean, like I said, this whole thing, the only thing that was the maybe five minutes of making, you know, adjusting the blade on my uh, circular saw and then cutting down the middle and then off to each side and then uh, using my uh, oscillating tool to cut right to the corner and then breaking it out. So you didn't lose a lot. So you can tell this whole thing here right now, we're, we're into it, you know, 15 minutes and then there was probably another five getting my tools in there and, and adjusting the blade and cutting that and the oscillating tool. So, you know, 20 minutes right now, um, not too bad, really. Uh, then I clean it up and, and then uh, you know, I had one other repair on this thing, which you'll see. Um, and then, then I got the hell out of there. So like I say, you know, honestly, doing repairs are really a lot of money when you think about it. Because like if I'm doing a, a, a ceramic tile repair, now you can see I finally got that gap together at one end. Now I got to do it here. Um, so, you know, if you're doing tile repairs, ceramic tile repairs, you're getting, you know, We've upped our price. I used to do them. Well, for military, retired military people and stuff like that, I'll, I'll still do it for under 200 bucks because, you know, they're old. And I, I respect the hell out of old World War II uh, veterans and older military guys that are 60 and 70 years old in Vietnam. And so I, I will do that lower of a price. But uh, we have raised our price to close to... $450 for this kind of stuff because, you know, let, let's say I have to go back out because the glue doesn't hold and it comes loose or I didn't hold it down good enough for it. Then the second time I'm going to be doing it for free, which <laughs> kind of sucks. And with ceramic tile, if, if you don't cut it and get the grout out of there, then when you're banging on the broken piece, it will transfer through and, and sometimes break the good piece on the other side. And most of the time, you only have two or three, maybe four pieces to do your repair because I, I, I don't know why tile layers uh, don't leave anything left behind. You know, they just, for some reason, don't. In my little garbage can and vacuum. So you got to be really careful. So if if I were doing a tile repair and I broke one of their good tiles and then I didn't have enough to fix it, I mean, it's not my fault and, and it's tough luck, you know, and sucks to be them, but I'm not going to be able to charge the hell out of them. I'm probably going to go, well, I'm sorry, I, you know, I should have cut the grout out more. Not that I would ever say that. And so I probably won't charge them. I just get it all put back together and do the best I can. And if they want to pay me, then they do. So, you, you know, you, you spend a lot of time fucking with stuff is what I'm going to say. And so I don't know how this voiceover is going to sound because I do have audio on it also. But I can probably turn that down and turn this up, you know, because you can hear the vacuum running and stuff. So right from here, it, it looks pretty good. And, and when you get right on top of it, 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 it it's together really nice. So now I just got to uh, get enough weight on it to, you know, uh, glue it together. So I put some uh, little barbells on it or something the lady has and, and something like that. And then, uh, then for the most part, uh, I'm done other than to put the three gapped boards together. I zoom in a little bit here and there for uh, looking at it. So there you have it. See, it, it looks good. That needs to go down. It, it looks like it's gap, but it's not. It's just up. So. All right, well, I wanted to throw this in somewhere too. 
Uh, in the video, you see me using this tool. Um, definitely uh, been used a lot. These little high impact uh, uh, neoprene things or whatever they are. And then uh, it's got the uh, cork on the bottom just so it doesn't scratch the, uh, the flooring. And then this is the tape. I don't know if you can see that really well. It's like a fiber or a mesh in there. And uh, it's quite uh, sticky. So what you do, and I, I'm down to one handed here. Let me see if I can hold, figure this out. All right, my, this might work a little bit better. So normally you end up taking this uh, tape and putting it on there. It's uh, sort of a two-sided sticky tape. And then when you're ready to use it again, then you just... Uh, Peel off this little layer here of the stuff, and then that leaves that there. And and I've learned over the many, 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 many years that if you don't bang on it too hard and, and destroy these uh, blue things on here by hitting it too hard, uh, the laminate will move better if you just tap on it slowly, you know, just bam, 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 but you don't try to get it to move all at once, especially with some of the new locking systems like I was using today, um, trying to get back together because they're, they're not really designed to slide together sideways and lock. So that's why I had to take off the edge on a few of the sides to where I could actually do what I needed to do. So um, I have found that just uh, repeated tapping with less pressure while I stand on this, um, we'll get it moving. And then once it starts moving, then, and you see that it's gonna go together, then you can put some glue in there and, and, and tap it together. Now you're not supposed to glue end to end because then those side joints will get locked together and then it can't, it can't slide or float as it's called. <clears throat> so this is the tool I was using. Um, if you're doing uh, repairs, uh, most uh, tile or laminate manufacturers like TriWest and Longest, um, Mohawk, you can um, buy this. I don't know what it's called. They have different kinds, but this one is pretty indestructible and works quite well. I've had it for, I don't know, 10 years. So even these blue things are fine. They're holding up. You know, it's a piece of steel. I could put some new slippery things on here uh, if, you know, if those come off or start leaving a, a, an edge to where it might scratch the laminate. <clears throat> so this is what was used to uh, get those gaps together, which you'll see in the video when I get that all put together. But I'm going to have to do a voiceover. I had some issues with the... Uh, The audio and even the video when I first started and lost a lot of the, the original, the first cuts or two, but you can get an idea of what, what ended up happening. So we'll put this all together and get it uploaded and uh, go from there. Thank you. Well, all right, here's some pictures of the project um, that I took while I was working along because my phone did keep screwing up. I want to thank you all for watching and I hope... Uh, this might help some of you that do uh, repair work or do floor covering or just handyman or um, you, you got your spouse uh, bugging you about fixing something. Um, everything can be fixed. And, and if I was going to charge you $450 and you thought you could do it yourself, well, you could run out and buy some of these tools for two, $300 and, and then you would you would be coming out ahead. So it, it's not a bad thing. Just sometimes try it yourself, even though you don't have the tools. Go out and buy them. Harbor Freight's got a good deal on these tools. Most of the tools I use for work, I use uh, the Hercules, and I've done reviews on that. And, and Bauer, the vacuum cleaner's Bauer. 
So um, you can buy a, a lot of stuff these days um, fairly inexpensively and, and, and do a repair and save yourself two three hundred dollars especially if you're kind of a, a, a do-it-yourselfer but not fully confident here's a video to help you be confident um, hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and leave a comment if you'd like and uh, throw in your input in the comment section would be great share um, if you know somebody else that does this kind of work and so uh, they can maybe uh, give me some of their input anyway I hope this helped you guys out and uh, have a good day. Talk to you later. Adios.